the seas and waterways of the Mesozoic were some of the most biologically rich locations in all of natural history. Some of the most diverse reptiles to have ever existed called these waterways home. From the 21 meter long Triassic ichthyosaur Shastasaurus to its tiny basal predecessor Cartorhynchus, roughly the size of a human forearm. In the Cretaceous period, huge snake-like mosasaurs patrolled the western interior seaway in pursuit of giant sea turtles, some of which grew to around 5 meters long from beak to tail. Perfectly adapted marine crocodiles, such as Metriorhynchus, shared the Jurassic waters with the famous Lyplerodon, a large predatory pliosaur. The iconic image of the looming plesiosaur, rearing its disproportionately tiny head out of the water on its elongated neck to snap at birds and pterosaurs is an age-old classic, even portrayed in a section of Disney's 1940 film Fantasia. These are all creatures that would have been astounding to see in the flesh. But there is one important thing to note, something which popular media still occasionally fails to get right. These animals were not dinosaurs. To those without an interest in paleontology, a dinosaur is still most likely one of two things, a gigantic lumbering beast or a plodding, cunning predator, hellbent on the total and utter destruction of its contemporaries. Thankfully, our knowledge of how these beautiful and criminally misrepresented creatures lived their lives is constantly evolving, and modern paleontologists have recently published several highly interesting papers describing new discoveries, presenting us with news on some quite unconventional lifestyles that various species of dinosaur adopted. Today, we will be plunging into the depths of some very recent and relevant science which has allowed us to obtain the knowledge that not all dinosaurs were tied to the land. Some of them turned to the waves and took up an aquatic lifestyle, producing outlandish creatures that look like no other creature alive today. To gain a better understanding of these new discoveries, we have to start in the summer of 2007, when, in Camaros Basin of northern Spain, the very first evidence of amphibious although not yet fully aquatic, dinosaurs was discovered. Carved into the rock face of what was once a vast early Cretaceous lake were sets of long, deep gashes, dating to around 125 million years ago. These marks were found in sets of twos and threes and carried on for about 15 meters across the ground. They could have only been made by a large, unnamed theropod dinosaur, which, judging from the geography of the location, would have been swimming in at least three meters of water as it dragged the claws of its hind limbs across the sediment as it swam from one side of the lake to the other. This is what we call a trace fossil, purely evidence that an animal was present in the area without finding any solid bones. Trace fossils include anything from dinosaur footprints to fossilized dung or caprolites. This was a concrete piece of evidence that dinosaurs could swim. As amazing as this discovery was, this told us hardly anything about the way certain dinosaurs lived their lives in comparison to some of the discoveries unearthed in the last few years. The African Cretaceous Giant Among Giants is without a doubt the poster child for discoveries concerning underwater dinosaurs. In 2014, Bones from a giant carnivore were brought to paleontologist Nizar Ibrahim by a nomad from the Moroccan Sahara Desert. These gigantic remains allowed us to peek even further into the amphibious lifestyle of this dinosaur. Famously depicted in Jurassic Park 3 as a terrestrial terror, sparring with Tyrannosaurus rex with pretty much a body plan to match, the fossils told an entirely different story. The large body of the dinosaur gave way to an even longer, tapering tail, which would have been highly flexible in life, aiding the dinosaur with propulsion through water. Spinosaurus's long, crocodilian-like snout was filled with rows of long, conical teeth. These teeth also overlapped, ensuring that when Spinosaurus caught a fish, there was no escape. A sharp, bony trap would have been closed around the unfortunate prey sealing its fate. 
The fish that Spinosaurus would most likely have been hunting was no small fry either. Oncopristus, the five to six meter long sawfish-like relative of rays, was a meal that could have fought its assailant back. While Morsonia, a huge relative of a colicant, would have been quite the mouthful. Having said that, a massive theropod dinosaur measuring 14 to 18 meters long would hardly have taken interest in hunting tiddlers. Another key discovery was found in the foot bones of the dinosaur. It possessed wide, flat feet with very long digits that may have been separated by webbed skin to aid the dinosaur in paddling, almost like a gargantuan swan. The creature's massively elongated skull was found with its nostrils positioned halfway up the length of the upper jaw, so it could have poked its snout into the water to pick off prey while still being able to breathe. Ibrahim's discoveries were revolutionary. Here was a gigantic theropod, previously assumed to live a terrestrial life, akin to its theropod contemporaries, with irrefutable proof that this dinosaur at least lived around the water's edge if not in it entirely. One interesting piece of information still needed to be corrected, however. Ibrahim proposed that Spinosaurus must have been quadrupedal, walking on four legs instead of two. Due to the positioning of Ibrahim's Spinosaurus hind legs, the center of gravity would have been too far forward for the dinosaur to keep itself upright on them alone. He theorized that the head of the dinosaur would have been too top-heavy for the legs to support the weight of it if it was positioned as far forward as it was. So this dinosaur must have needed to walk on all four of its limbs, instead of adopting the typical theropod stance of fast-moving bipedal pursuit hunter. Further discoveries in Morocco in 2018, later published in 2020, unearthed an extra 131 bones previously missing from the Spinosaurus. Many of these bones were tail bones, specifically bones that jutted up from the dorsal and posterior side of the tail, called neural spines and chevrons, showing us that it was in fact much longer and even more flexible than previously figured. In life, these bones would have constructed a huge paddle or fluke-like structure out of the Spinosaurus's tail, running from the base right through the tip. This proved two things. Firstly, with the added weight of the tail, Spinosaurus's center of gravity had shifted, meaning that this was most likely a bipedal dinosaur when spending time on land. Secondly, the massive paddle of a tail would have been the perfect biological device to push the dinosaur through water, meaning that, at this point, this creature was probably an aquatic predator that caught its prey in the water like a crocodile, instead of at the water's edge like a heron. Probably. Not certainly. This, in particular, is something which confused scientists for a long while following this discovery. But Spinosaurus' story doesn't end there. Just last month in March 2022, yet another development was published. It was discovered that Spinosaurus' bone walls were highly dense, allowing it to remain submerged for long periods of time much like modern penguins do today. The question was finally answered. Spinosaurus was a dinosaur that would spend much of its life submerged beneath the rivers, lakes, and waterways of ancient North Africa, where it could chase after the huge fish species it shared its home with. Paleontologists still aren't completely ruling out a waiting lifestyle, as the dinosaur may have occasionally snapped up its meals from the water's edge, but all signs are currently pointing to a lifestyle of full underwater immersion. Truly an amazing discovery. The same paper, in fact, gave us two dinosaurs for the price of one. Not only was the famous Spinosaurus an aquatic predator, but the same features have been found in Baryonyx, its close cousin from Britain, which must have lived a very similar lifestyle. However, another close relative of the two, Suchomimus, lacked this level of bone density, meaning that this dinosaur might have been a wader and likely did not enter the water to hunt, pointing to an amazing level of diversity in just one small group of dinosaurs alone.
The Spinosaurus aren't the only dinosaurs that were well suited to an aquatic or at least semi-aquatic lifestyle, it would seem. From the get-go, with those early trace fossils in 2007, we can assume that many species of dinosaurs were most likely adept swimmers. But this recent evidence within the Spinosaur family has shown us that some dinosaurs lived completely different lives to the ones we assumed they lived when we first discovered them. Traveling back a few years prior in 2017, we can see a fantastic example of aquatic dinosaur diversity in a little dromaeosaur named House Caraptor from the late Cretaceous of Mongolia, which was around 70 million years old. When paleontologists first examined the House Caraptor specimen, they assumed that it must have been more than one animal mixed together due to the sheer abnormality of the creature. This creature was plainly a dromaeosaur, with its long, curved toe claws and the small, slender body of a raptor. But parts of the fossil look like they wouldn't have been out of place on a penguin or a duck. Its short forelimbs resembled flipper-like structures, which must have been used for swimming. A duck-like snout and a long, slender, goose-like neck made up the front proportion of the fossil which was confirmed to be the real deal by paleontologists at the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility. Within the snout were many tiny teeth, used for gripping onto slippery fish, which would have made up the majority of the Halscoraptor diet. The creature would have been entirely streamlined in life, most likely covered in a waterproof, duck-like down of feathers to help insulate the creature. This is yet more evidence that we know relatively little about the lifestyle of many dinosaurs, and the first proof of an aquatic dromaeosaur. Amongst the other dromaeosaurs, we have also discovered other specimens that were most likely suited to the life of heron-like waiting. The South American raptors, Epapiara and Buitri raptor, both from the late Cretaceous, possessed long legs and long snouts, perfect for standing in shallow water and spearing fish as they darted past. It may not be a purely aquatic lifestyle, but how much might be out there that we haven't uncovered yet that could develop our knowledge of these creatures? Even the little ankylosaur Leoningosaurus, also mentioned in our video on the Yixiang Formation, is thought to be aquatic, with teeth adapted to grabbing and chewing fish in the waterways of Cretaceous China. This is an even more unusual species, considering that all of its cousins were the huge armored tanks synonymous with the classic images of the Mesozoic. Discoveries such as the Spinosaurus and Halscoraptor almost raise more questions than they answer. We now know that these creatures spent a lot of their lives underwater, pursuing food in a manner we think is unconventional for a dinosaur. How many more creatures may have lived similar lives that the fossil record hasn't revealed to us yet. Dinosaurs were the dominant life form on Earth for 165 million years. Today, the mammals are the dominant life form, and they have been dominant for a much shorter time than the dinosaurs were. But just look at the aquatic biodiversity among them. Whales and dolphins, manatees and dugongs, beavers and the capybara, moose, otters, bears, minks, seals, hippopotamuses, desmonds, and the platypus are all at least semi-aquatic. What kind of lifestyles could be out there, waiting to be discovered? How many more dinosaurs may have led such lives? Discoveries are being made constantly. We might not have to wait as long as we think to discover the answers to these questions among many others.